Heroin. 
All right. How long ago, baby? Right. Okay. Shelly, sit up for me, hi. We got here. She's with us a little bit. She's maintaining her weight. She's pretty high. Yeah, girl. Come on. Pittsburgh has a lot of heroin, and it does seem to be the drug of choice, and it has increased in the past year or so, as far as our call volume. What time did you shoot up today, babe? Just a little bit ago? Okay. Just straight heroin? Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, 14, just bring our stretcher, please. a paramedic in Pittsburgh's EMS, you are your, your paramedic and your social worker, you handle domestic crisis, you know, intervention, you have all kinds of hats in this job. Hey Rob, paramedic Jim Brown here in Lower Hill, we're about uh, two blocks away from Mercy. 27 year old female heroin overdose, still pretty loaded here, in Canada, but it is protecting her way at this time. Uh, states that she shot up fire approximately a half hour ago. Family states that she came home, started foaming from the mouth and passed out on the couch. Shelly, how you doing, huh? How many times did you shoot up today? More than one? Yeah. Usually they give you some Narcan and wake you up, huh? No? Oh, yeah. This would be a good time to quit, huh? says that she's been clean for a year, but she felt that she needed to go to rehab, and she called a rehab clinic, and they wouldn't return her call, so she went ahead and uh, shot up to get through the day. Now, any kids? Oh. She has a little boy that she doesn't get to stay with anymore because she's messed up. That, that itself is a tragedy, not to be with your mom. Kind of hard to be a mom when you're high, huh? I'm only get off that stuff so you can see him again, okay? All right, we're here, okay? Who knows? Maybe she'll straighten up. Maybe she really was legitimate going to a clinic. Or maybe she's just pulling everybody's leg and get high and pull one day. Somebody will pick her up tomorrow. Shelly, Shelly, Sugar, we're here, okay? What's your name? Jim Brown. A good paramedic is the total package. We need to be able to respond to calls, treat people appropriately, and deal with the call when it's over. Cujo needs to get heart patient Catherine McSorley to the hospital. She was in a state that we kind of generally try to think of as like pre-arrest state, where you're just preparing yourself for her to go into cardiac arrest. I'm talking about 150 so far. Now pressure? None. That's still no blood pressure. You know, I bear her up there with the muscle mass. There's some mass here. Oh. Yeah, Brian. Okay. 50 joules. 50 joules. Sink sink it. Yeah, sink sink it. It. That's safest. Okay. You ready? Blair? Blair. Oh. Okay, honey, it's gonna hurt. Okay, babe, keep on going. You're doing all right. right we already overed her at 50 joules, which isn't a lot but it's enough to stop the heart and hopefully the heart will restart on its own. Andy, three medic five still here. Go ahead. Okay, we're leaving. Cujo rushes heart patient Catherine McSorley to the hospital. We're actually just a couple blocks away, so. Yeah, I think our patient's doing quite well, actually, uh, MD3. Uh, right now, pressure of 100, uh, pulse looks to be about 90. She does throw occasional PVCs here. Um, stand by, I think she just went to VTAC. VTAC, honey, how you doing? You all right? Okay. One second, honey. Catherine's heart races out of control. Okay, relax, relax. One second, one second, honey, okay? Just let me get a pulse on you here. What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay. Coming through, excuse us. Brother, I did it. We're trying to take over The trauma team takes over. You did quite a bit, huh? Right, one, two, three. Are you having any chest pain? This is bad. 
bad, this is better. You know, she went from no blood pressure to, to having one, so that's always a bonus. Can't really walk around without a blood pressure. If it took us a couple more minutes to get there, she would have been a full-blown cardiac arrest, not breathing, no pulse or anything. So, actually, uh, good job. We, you know, we did what we're supposed to do. Okay, man, will you take care, okay? Well, I'm, I think you'll do a good job. No, I think you'll do fine. Oh, you're quite welcome. Anytime you know. Anytime you need, you just call. Right? Okay. Thank you. Some of the days when you actually save a life, it makes it all worthwhile. There's probably nowhere else that you want to be at that, that point in time. This is the Bloomfield area of Pittsburgh. And it's more of a older Italian neighborhood, at least over where I live. In fact, there are a couple of blocks from my house. This is a really neat town. James gets called to a familiar address. My wife called and uh, apparently my little girl fell and split her lip open. So we thought we'd swing by and check her out. This is a real house call. This is my own house, where Jody and Sarah and I reside. Hi, gang. My little girl, she's learned to jump and run. And the only thing she hasn't finished learning is how to stand up after these jumps and falls. Um, I tried to open her mouth and it looked, it was bleeding and it looked like her tooth fell out. But her teeth seem to be all intact and I don't think that she hit her head. I don't think she, I mean, she's neurologically fine. Mmm. Want some more? Sarah is almost two years old. She thinks she's about three going on four. So. Yeah, you're just fine. at 14. Actually, I love going home to check Sarah out because I figure if my wife is calling me, then it must not be too bad. Because if it was really bad, she'd be calling 911 and then calling me. I need a vacation, I think. <laughs> love you. Come on, go say bye bye. Kind of actually helps break the monotony, kind of reminds you what you're doing here. Yeah, don't cry, don't cry. Bye-bye. 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 Love you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b
to take her and get her straightened out again. See you guys. See you guys. I'm a working mom. I have a one natural child and two foster children at home. Being another one saved. <laughs> Being a working mom is pretty difficult. You have to deal with the phone calls that come in from home. Hello? Who's having a party? Do I know her mother? No, oh, no, 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 no. What is he doing? I said, when are you talking to my... When? You can't go anywhere unless I'm home. I pay for that after-school program, and you will go to Bidwell. Don't tell me nothing about being boring. Is that all you had to ask me? James gets a call from a song downtown. The job gets scary when it's going into the unknown. You just don't know who you're going to see. You're waiting for the police to get there and it makes you uneasy. Yeah, the father's son involved in an altercation out here on the street. The father and son were attacked with iron bars. Shop owner Akil Mishra was attacked in front of his store. How does how do I look to you other than ugly? You have a pimple right here. Okay, thank you. Is it clear or is it is it blurry? It's clear. Okay, everything looks normal on this side. Normal, yeah. Okay, you understand that there's there's potential here for something wrong with your neck. Okay, mm -hmm. it may you may not feel it at the moment. Yeah, I know. He took one iron rod and he just. Hit it with that. Okay. Here, you got about a two-inch laceration to the head. That was probably from the iron bar you were hit with? Yeah. And it looks like you came and got you again. You got another about two-inch gash mm -hmm. here, okay? I tried to save my son. Okay. So instead of he hit the okay. son. Okay, well, my partner's know. with your son now. Okay. Okay. How are you doing? I don't know. I came right in here to you. Okay. Can you hold still for me? I'm going to get some clean here. So we're just going to cover all that up for you, okay? You know, no, he just there. went out across the seat, grabbed the iron rod, you know, yeah. like a kung fu. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about we going up to Mercy? Uh, you killed did he hit you anywhere else uh, with the iron rod? No. Not in the chest, not in the belly? No. He comes up to my face and he's like, give me a dollar fifty before I kick your ass. I didn't say anything. And then he's just like, uh, he's saying stuff, you know, like gonna kick my ass and all that and like, suck my and all this stuff. And then uh, he starts walking away. I go to my dad and I tell him what happened. We went to go see the guy and he just, he got scared. He just started flipping out. And my dad just pushed him once and he went and grabbed a rod and hit him. Pittsburgh's not really a violent city at all. It, uh, it has it just like anybody else. I mean, you're dealing with 500,000 people. Pick this leg up off the bed. Good. Pick this leg up off the bed. I wouldn't say that it's overly violent. I think in comparison to other cities, it's pretty status quo. The thing is, this, because of cut. You know. Yeah, you've got a pretty big cut on your head there. He's being checked out here by Dr. Mahoney. Pretty nice doctor. All right. Oh. Some pretty good lacerations, but we went ahead and went with the full immobilization just in case he might have had a fracture to the neck that he was not aware of. But things like that, we just need to cover all bases and fully immobilize the patient and let them make the call that everything's clear. It is hard to swallow sometimes, some of these calls. It does wrench your heart. But you can also go home knowing that you did everything you could to help this person and that family. That call came in for a male patient that's supposedly unresponsive. They said he is breathing. He's behind a, a new high-rise building down in Oakland. Larry Kennedy's condition is a mystery. Someone said that uh, they, they just found him passed out on the ground. You never know. It could be anything. Good call, Sam. Oh, 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 sir, sir. Police also, please. Medic 5 on police 3. Yeah, 
dominate that car start down here. I had to pin him down. It, it's one of those things, you know, we don't do it to hurt anybody. We do it to actually not let them hurt themselves and to not let them hurt us. Sir. Sir. How you doing? Do Larry. Larry, we're going to get you in the stretch and we're going to check you out, okay? Yeah, we called the police just in case we had to handcuff him if uh, we couldn't restrain him on the stretcher. Hey, Larry, how you doing, my man? How you doing? Today, buddy. Larry Kennedy was found unconscious. On, the paramedics Larry? are trying to figure out why. Who are the paramedics? Okay. When we started to assess him, he had no signs of, of any type of problem. His pupils were good. He didn't show any of the classic signs from a drug overdose. You said you weren't feeling right? It could be, you know, five or six different things. So you actually do have to play kind of a detective, and you, you almost have to uh, diagnose somebody in the field. When it's so vague like that, you just, you, you have to do a little more investigation. Do you remember passing out, sir? Um, no, just, uh, I feel just tired, just hot and tired. Just hot and tired? Yeah. Okay. How old are you? 40. Do you know where you're at right now? Okay. okay. Just, just relax, relax. Right. Just relax, relax. okay? We're, we're just, the paramedics. We're just checking you out, okay? It's okay. Then. Found him outside of a high-rise building down in Oakland where he works. He became real combative initially. Shortly after that, with some inappropriate speech right now, he's still sluggish with some responses. One, three. One, two, three. Okay. How you feeling? Yeah. Do you know where you are right now? Larry. Can you look, Larry, can you look at me? Can you hear me? You try to look out for your own safety. And it wasn't a situation where you normally think that the scene can be unsafe. It wasn't like, a, you know, following a violent incident or anything. So I think when we're not on our guard, that's when we do get hurt. Kind of surprised us in there. Huh? Kind of jumped up and surprised us a little bit. Dude, you seem like you're doing a lot better now. You know? The doctors determined that Larry had a seizure brought on by a migraine. Okay, sir, well, good luck to you, okay? Anytime, anytime. Okay. Thank you for that. It's 3 o'clock in Pittsburgh. Darnella gets the first call of her shift. Man, this is the most nerve-wracking part of the job when, you know, like, going through cars like this when you know you just have this much space. James Mutchler in a daze. And I came in the door and he was like standing like this and he just wouldn't move. And I said, Jeff, what's wrong with him? Well, what's going on today? I have like a, uh, these are false. Okay. And they, they've been killing me all day. So, so when I got here. I thought you said your back was hurt. No, no, it was my tooth. Okay. You see, these come out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I grabbed a couple of these wide and grabbed them, but, but I had them on me, you know, and I stopped to get some water. James took more painkillers than he should have. How many milligrams did you have? Six of the 20s, the ones that are orange. You took 60. I, I Six. thought they were the smaller ones, you know. Your teeth probably aren't hurting you no more, huh? No. Here's your sister called. Very, you know. Okay. Do you know what his name is? Well, why don't you ask him? Yeah. <laughs> James yeah. Mutchler. Man. Just think of Butch. He can, he, can, he can probably even spell it for you. He might be able to. He was just stoned on pills. Nothing really wrong with him. Well, you want to go down to the hospital and get checked? Oh, no. You think you're going to be all right? Yeah, I think so. That's not my drug of choice anyway. <laughs> yeah, when you go in and you see something like that, I mean, they laugh with you because it's like, maybe it's not so bad. You have to joke with somebody like that because, I mean, that, that's funny. Yeah, he's going to be a happy camper for the next uh, 
uh, three hours. <laughs> Maybe we better make you quit taping. People think this job's too easy. <laughs> about three or four years ago. <clears throat> now everything's done on computers. It's easier for them to track the calls and to download all the information. 47-year-old male fell having a recording Brian Pochet asking that five on the signal. Been up into the housing projects in our district for a male patient, uh, 30, 33 years old. Said he's uh, having some chest pain. They do go ahead and say he's immunocompromised, which means he's positive for HIV. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? All right. What's going on today? Uh, chest pains are lightheaded. 37-year-old Michael Solomon is visiting his sister from out of state. Can you point to where your pain is? Yes, right, right in here. On the right side there? Yes. And what's it feel like? Sharp. Sharp pain. His lung sounds clear, though. You know, with his history and everything, he's more susceptible to some diseases. We're just going to work him up. I'll uh, get him in the truck, check him out a little bit more, check him out on a heart monitor, and take him to a Presbyterian, get him looked at. How long have you been diagnosed HIV? Uh, since 88. 88. What's your T cell count now? You know? It's uh, 289. We did start an IV, uh, so there's there's always more risks every time you do any type of intervention on him. You just have to be cautious, and you have to know exactly where everything is, the needles, where the bloods are, so you're not careless. And that's I think that's how a lot of people do get stuck on this job, get stuck with the needle. It's just carelessness. Cujo was stuck six months ago. It was it was actually my own fault. I stuck myself. It was just one of these accidents where. I was giving an injection of uh, Narcan into some an IV drug user that had overdosed on heroin. I had the needle in my left hand. I went to pass it to my right hand to throw away, and I stuck myself in the thumb. And she was negative for HIV, which is positive for hepatitis C. Usually, if you're going to catch the disease, you'll catch it within the first six months. So I have one more test to go, and everything else is working out pretty good. Did you ever get that pneumonia before or any type of like respiratory that. problem? No, I didn't. No. no? Good, no. good. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. It's going up your arm now? Which which arm? That same way, okay, same side. We're just pulling in now, so we'll tell him. He's from out of state, uh, didn't bring any of his medications up with him. Now he's complaining of some just basic generalized chest pain. Still having pain. Yeah. Sir, what would you give your chest pain? It's about a six or a seven. Lift up your head for me. The doctors aren't sure what's causing Michael's condition. They think it's related to him not taking his medication. So we had something common, you know. I took that that medicine that he was taking too, and I know what it makes you feel like. Sometimes you don't want to take it, but you have to. Yeah, because it may, like I said, it does make it does make you sick. At least it made me sick, where I couldn't eat, and I know he's going through a little bit. Put the stretcher back together. New linen, clean, fresh linen. That's it. All these years when I was when I was a teenager, never made my bed. Getting paid back. Yeah, every day you're making like four or five beds. I'm gonna make somebody a good husband one day, I guess. I don't know. Oh, this is my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, it's better if you turn it the right way. <laughs> so, how you been? I'm on the other side. Come see me before I leave. All right. Now it's the end of the shift. Best time of the day. Time to go home. Beer time. It's Friday. All right. We'll see you later. All right, Tony. That's the end of that shift. <laughs> Hopefully. It's 1 a.m. James is on night shift. We've got some really lousy weather. It's raining on us. The roads are slippery. Yeah, 
in his trap inside her car. Okay, okay, my name's Jim. I'll be here with you all night. I know, baby, I know. some morphine on board to help take away some of that pain, okay? Does your head hurt right now? Okay, right now? Actually, we have to, sweetheart. Your leg is broken, okay? They're gonna have to try to straighten it out. Keep breathing that in for me. Yeah, girl. Sugar, you're doing great, okay? Is that some of that pain going away right now? Okay, okay, okay. Just, where does it hurt? By your wrist? Okay, and we're gonna get you in the truck and we're gonna head on down to Presby. Oh. Listen to me. We're gonna be going kind of quick. We'll put on some lights and signs, get you there, all right? You gonna show up? You gonna ever see the movie Emergency? Okay, remember all those people in the back room when they come with the patient? You're in the ball game now, okay? They're all gonna be there waiting. Okay? Go ahead, relax, we're gonna see you. Somebody needs to be giving you a voice of reason. Let her know that things are gonna be okay. She's already chaotic in her mind as it is. She's got an obvious femur fracture. Pretty good fracture at that. Yeah. She's got some morphine on board here and probably feel the pain a little bit. Seal. Anything hurting here on your arm? Okay. Honey, we're gonna take off, all right? Uh, original was 112 left. Darnella responds to a call. Woman down, bleeding on Wood Street. On which corner? Maybe this one that looks all distraught. Hello? How you doing? I think I'm all right. What happened? My boyfriend beat my ass. She said the first time. 30-year-old Vonda Morris was assaulted by her live-in boyfriend. The last time that he beat me, he got me locked up. He failed to hit me. He told them that I was trying to kill myself. And they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Did he have a weapon at all? Or no, he, he just, was just kicking just, me in my head. head. Okay. He knocked me on the ground. He kicked me in my head like three or four times. Okay. Just because he couldn't get his way. Um, and you know what? Yeah, 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 it's okay. It's, it's really bad because next time... I'm afraid that I'll kill him. And I'll be the one to get locked the f up. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure will. And I'm scared of that. It's just a why you're gonna have to just put your foot down and do something about it so it'll stop. Because it's only gonna get worse. Okay. I really felt for her. I knew that there was a way out. She would just have to make herself strong enough to do it. James races to the hospital with car crash victim Lucille Davidson. The femur fracture is pretty 
pretty serious. She uh, started the windshield. She was unrestrained in this collision, so she could have some pretty good problems laying ahead. Helping somebody. You help them whether they have a little cut on their head, or you help them when they crunch the car. You're there for all of it. We meet again. Dr. Mahoney has been expecting them. Okay, are you ready Yeah. Okay, so there are a couple bumps. Dealing with car accidents can be real extreme. It can be very emotional and very traumatic to the folks involved in it. Hi there, ma'am. Watch the top of the strap needs undone yet. Strong radio pause. Okay, see you. Here we go, sir. One, two, three. James leaves Lucille in the hands of the trauma team. She messed it up real well. <laughs> when you're going to break it, she broke it good. 503, medic 14. One thing you have to be when you're out in the street and you're working with people, you always have to be some type of social worker. I can't understand how I let myself feel like this. I was always strong. You know, yeah, you can't feel this is no punching bag. He knows what he's doing. I know how it feels to be degraded, lose your self-worth, lose your self-esteem. I had been involved in domestic abuse and it makes you feel like you're not worth anything. Find somebody that's gonna treat you right, but first you gotta treat yourself right. You gotta treat you, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking for acceptance from everybody else instead of yourself? If you was a plant in there right in my face, I couldn't even look at myself. I could be a little. Spiritual guidance would help you too. I think so. With her, it was sort of, I've been there, I'm here to tell you that you are somebody, you are worth something. Here I am in this uniform, I'm taking you to get help. She helped me. I felt like I had really done something that I had really helped one person. You just need a hug. You just need a hug. As the shift wears on, James calls home. Hello. Being a paramedic has done a lot of things for me as a person. It's helped me see what's going on in the real world. It's given me the opportunity to take care of people. It made me appreciate and love my family even more so than I think the average person. Uh, we have a date next weekend. I'm really excited about that. We'll, we'll get tickets for the show, for the boat. I love you. Bye-bye. The start of round two. <laughs> James is on his way across town to the scene of an assault. We've been called back to the other side of the city to see a elderly woman apparently was assaulted when somebody broke into her house. So she's out here with the police right now. We're going to go take a look at things. I kind of see. Rita is a patient that uh, I know fairly well. Rita is very pleasant to deal with. She's a very nice personality. Her family's they're very nice people. Are we gonna stay here? Who's gonna go up with her? What's going on? How did you, how did they do this to you, Rita? You were holding the phone. She was talking to me on the phone. Then all of a sudden she starts screaming. I ain't got no money. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. And I heard somebody in the background say, "Shut up." So I ran out the door and got in my car. And I come away. When I got here, the police was here. And those dressers in there, and, and try not to let people walk on that carpet to just try to keep these two areas here clear. I'm going to slide this one over here. Unfortunately, somebody broke into the house and slammed her to the ground uh, trying to steal the money from her house. She was really hurting then. 
that that stinks because you wish that when you see these folks that you you weren't meeting them in that situation. Somebody say, okay? They broke the screen, come through her back door, and her daughter was sitting on the front steps. They seemed to think that her arm's broken. Um, kind of concerned because she's just had three recent heart attacks. So it's like, you know, they're going to take her up to Allegheny General and check her out and make sure she's all right. Rita has suffered several injuries, including a possible broken arm. Did you quit smoking? How long has that been? <laughs> Rita has an extensive heart history and sometimes gets really sick. I adore Rita. Uh, even when she was really sick having her heart attack, she managed to crack little comments and so forth. She always apologizes for having us come to her house. She always thanks us for coming to her house. And she always thanks me for having my head shaved. She thinks it's really nice. It always makes her smile because she can identify me out of the crowd. You want to touch your pinky to your thumb? No. No, all right. Ooh, I know. Welcome back to the roads of Pittsburgh, huh? It's Rita. She's a nice person. And what happened was a very sad thing, and it shouldn't happen to anybody, but it really stinks to know that it was happening to somebody who's been so sick. Rita's Rita, and she's one of ours. Pittsburgh has just an interesting geography, whether it be, you know, you have some nice hills, you have some flat land, you have rivers um, that separate everything. Oh, I love Pittsburgh. It's, it's a very unique town. It's, you know, it's a bigger town. It has all the, all the resources that any big town, any big city would have, but it also has that, that small town feel. They're working class people here. You know, that's the way they were raised. They were raised as a steel town and more down to earth. Pujo is called to a gardening accident. Excuse us. Excuse us. Hi. Hi. It's my right elbow. Your right elbow. Jennifer Smith slipped in manure while volunteering at her local church garden. Right in the stinkiest place, too. You know? uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, at least I'm not sitting right in it. That's I mean, right. my foot is in it, but my rest of me isn't in it. Actually, it happened right here. Right in here? Yeah. Okay. Anything hurting okay, in your yeah. shoulder? Um, no, just the tension from my, the way I'm holding my arm, but not pain from the injury. Okay. Is this an old shirt? Yeah. Is it okay if I cut the sleeve so I can take a look oh, without? Sure. Does that hurt? <laughs> I was never much good with green things, and now it's <laughs> just further proof. Okay, I may have popped back in itself. That's it, by the time we're done with this. So put the shirt back behind you. One, two, three. So she dislocated her elbow, and fallen just standing position to the ground. Not, we don't see too many gardening accidents. This is it, actually this is probably my first this year. It's not high risk. Not a high risk activity. Is gardening. It's stress relieving. That's stress yeah. inducing. Just kind of focus on one spot now. Well, you said you just just gave birth five weeks ago. Yeah, sixteen. Uh, my second. So second. These are the first. So it's worse than giving birth? No, I guess not. <laughs> the only thing we can do for her is just bring her over, give her a ride over, and let, let the doctors take a look at her, get some x-rays. A couple more bumps. No, there's need more for me. for a man down having a seizure in Market Square, probably the same guy we had the other day. He's unconscious, but he has a good pulse. May 14, be advised, that male, when he called, stated he had just had a seizure, said he felt like there was another one coming on. The phone dropped. Uh, we have an open line there, possibly seizing at this time. A man went into seizure while making the 911 call. Dealing with our regulars here downtown does kind of give you the small town atmosphere in the sense that you do know them. Hey, buddy. 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 Hey, bu
Cody. Check out. What's going on? 24 year old Matthew Radetzky is one of James's regulars. What's your name? Matthew? We've, we pick up Matthew a lot. And some of the problems that we have with Matthew is that he doesn't take his medications. When he doesn't take his medications, he seizes out. He's, when he has his seizures, he's taking us out of service. We see him on an average of, uh, gosh, at least once a week. And you get a call from these folks, and actually, you probably could be going somewhere and somebody is having cardiac arrest. All right, you know the drill here. We're just going to get a line going for you. Something the meds are starting to work. Okay. Draw some blood. Big pain, your partner. Yeah. Operator said she was, she was a little concerned because she was talking to you and then uh, you dropped the phone. So. Sorry. Oh, no. No, that's not, that's not a problem. G today? Matthew. G today? Matthew. 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 How are we doing here, partner? Uh, during the course of our conversation, the patient's gone and went into another seizure at this time. Responsive. Matthew. Eighteen-month-old baby fell off the kitchen table. She was unconscious, but is now alert. They'd like to check. Yeah. Well, let's see what we got. She fell off the table. She fell flat. She was real limp when I picked her up, and then she went unconscious, and then it scared me. She did go unconscious? Yeah. For how long? Not, not long. Okay. From the time it took me to get from the kitchen to the front door. Let's sit down. We'll check her out a little bit. Hi, honey. Daily. Hi, honey. Daily. Look, it's a guy. You love guys. Mom says she's a little pale. Not really? Everything else is checking out okay. okay. It's not going to hurt. Look. You like band-aids. That doesn't hurt. She's crying her head off for around strangers, which is normal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love kids. I, I think it's part of the job yeah. because kids get scared when they see strangers. And you just think about if it was your kid. So you just try to be gentle. You put a big balloon on your arm, okay? You put a balloon on your arm? Yes, I can do that. You can do that? Since she's a little bit pale and she did go um, unconscious for a little, for a couple seconds, and mom said that we think it's a good idea, we're going to take her and get her checked out. Everything else is checking out okay, her blood pressure, pulse rate. So it's probably nothing, but just to be on the safe side, we'll just get her settled in and be ready to go. I would like to raise a family here. This is a very nice town. And I'm just looking for the right person. Yeah. I have a lot of other things I'm trying to accomplish in my life, just trying to move up through the job and career and um, trying to finish school. And I feel like I'm, I'm more settled now than I was at 22 or 21 when I first started here. I'm just going to do the report now. It shouldn't take us too long to get this one done. It's another easy call. Matthew. Matthew. Hey, Matt. Matt. Uh, Wake up for me, Matt. Up, Come on, Matt. Come on, our patient's uh, post uh, unable to really re be aroused at this time. He's seizing again. Okay, I'm going to stay on the line here. Our patient's seizing again. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and line. Matt. Matthew. With a second seizure, Matthew is getting worse. Matthew. Matthew, can you hear me there, bud? Wake up for me. Same bald, ugly guy. Still here. Wake up. I'm going to go ahead and hook him up to the EKG here. Let's take a quick picture here to see if there's anything irregular about what's going on. Matthew slowly comes back. He's coming around. Monitor's still showing signs for them. Pressure 136. Still holding his airway. He's batting about 98%. <laughs> You okay? All right. We're going to take you over to the hospital. 61 to 14. How are you doing? We treat these patients the same each time we see them for the simple fact mm. that uh, there might be something different. What if their seizure fails to stop when, when we're there? Or what if it's, you know, you can't just become numb to the fact that you, you see them repeatedly. 
Here comes another one. Over 50 paramedics prepare for Pittsburgh's annual marathon. Thanks, Bert. 